You're listening to the Light Novel Podcast. Visit us online at lightnovelpodcast.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first Light Novel Podcast of 2019. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about our favorite reads from 2018, just to kind of say goodbye to that year. And uh, then we're going to look ahead at 2019, and each we're going to talk about a couple titles that we would love to personally see licensed in 2019 for well, our variety of reasons. Uh, I am Justice R. Stone, and with me tonight is the entire gang. We've got Flies. Yo, hello. <laughs> We've got Bio Gundam. When the hell did we become a gang? <laughs> when we all started wearing the same colored bandanas. Uh, we have Jean-Luc. I can match the medito. Wow, okay. <laughs> we have Kyle. Hola. <laughs> we have Tom. Are we like the yellow scarves or the dollars? Oh, dollar, dollar bill, y'all. Okay. Uh, and we have Terrence. Yo. <laughs> money, just... money, money. <laughs> uh, we've all we've all obviously benefited from the break from each other. It's <laughs> uh, okay. So first off, we're going to start with the news and. My lord, there's quite a lot of it because, you know, that's what happens when you take a couple of weeks off. Um, so let's start, uh, hopefully, with a couple of the quick ones that are just like anime announcements and stuff like that. Uh, first one, uh, we have, they have confirmed Ari Ferretta will be premiering in July of 2019. Uh, this one, of course, licensed by J Novel Club and was supposed to be out earlier, but... Apparently, I guess everybody reacted really poorly to the initial uh, animation, so they scrapped it and started over again. Yeah, I actually watched the trailer, and I think it's like a definite improvement. Like, it's a lot more, like, focused and detailed. Like, it's giving that series that real panache I think it deserves. I agree. I agree. The animation looks way better. The character designs look a lot better. A lot better. Like, yeah, I I agree. I think it was worth, uh, I think it was the right decision to make. Um, Goblin Slayer anime ended with a tease that there would be more coming. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> more things to anger the Annie tubes on, uh, yeah, online. Uh, uh who knows it, if it's going to be a second season, an OVA, a movie, or if they're just trying to pimp out the novels. I don't know. Um, they really, all they said was Goblin Slayer will return. It's like an Avengers tease, man. Um, <laughs> Uh, then uh, we had an interesting kind of rumor come out that apparently the domain dendroanime.jp was registered, which had a number of people all excitedly wondering if this meant we might get an infinite dendrogram anime. And uh, so far, there's been nothing further about this. Like, no one, there's been no confirmation, right? As long as they animate it like the novel, I'm going to watch it. Oh man, if the if this animation style is like similar to the light novels, it'll be beautiful. It'll be worth watching regardless of how good they adapt it. Just give me 24 episodes, you'll be fine. Just have like one of those um have the chick who did this um first opening for Sora Online sing it and then t- then t- then it turns into like a heavy punk metal band when Nemesis goes on the screen. <laughs> Vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> like make it start out like life and fluffy and upbeat and then it turns to like heavy diff punk metal well i want it, i actually want the voice actress of nemesis to do the vengeance is mine like that would be awesome i'd sign up for that <laughs> um the seishun buta yaro series or that we got released as rascal does not dream of bunny girl that caused a grand stir in the Annie tube of waifus. Uh, it, they have confirmed the film is coming summer of 2019. So uh, if you love the anime, you've got more to look forward to. And I believe the, the film, the anime did volumes one to five. And I believe the movie is doing volume six and seven. Um, and I screwed up in one of my videos. I thought that was the end of the series, but it's still ongoing. So never mind what I said. And if you watched that video, uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, we also have 
a light novels a couple of new animation anime coming out that have been announced uh first off we have a light novel series called cop craft getting an anime in 2019 uh it's notable because it's actually written by the author of full metal panic uh, the story is 15 years ago, an unknown hyperspace gate opened over the Pacific. Beyond this gate lies Reto Semani, a strange alternate world where fairies and demons live. San Teresa City, a city where over 2 million immigrants live from both worlds. As a result, there are the haves and the have-nots. Here is the world's newest city of dreams. But in the shadow of the chaos, crime is rampant. Drugs, prostitution, and weapon trafficking. The detectives who stand up to these heinous crimes are in the San Teresa City Police. When the detective K. Matoba and the alternate world knight Tirana, two individuals who differ in gender, personality, and even world of origin, meet, an incident erupts. Two worlds, two justices. From this, the curtain rises on a buddy police action story. That sounds fucking great, and I also want magic weapons and drugs. Well, that, I'm pretty sure that's exactly the whole idea, is that there's, like, that's the whole idea of the trafficking, is that there are, like, crazy drugs that don't exist on Earth and weapons. So, like, so I want like... a flame sword. Fuck the police. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like Bright the Enemy. <laughs> yeah, let's well, hope it turns out better than Bright. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't well, that bad. Well, actually, it's, it reminded me. Now, okay, this is probably dating myself, but there was also a movie called Alien Nation years ago, and then they turned it into a TV series, and it was the same idea. It was about a group of aliens arriving in Los Angeles, and basically they integrated one or two of the aliens into the police force to help with that, and and it was the same thing: alien drugs, alien weaponry. Hey, wasn't there a movie, stuff. another movie, where some dude with like aliens at a refugee camp, and then the dude becomes one of them, and he's like piloting mm-hmm. this mech, yeah, in Africa. District, uh, District, yeah. Nine. District Nine, District Nine, yeah, yep. Yep. Oh, so, th- this not... anime would be dope if it's like District Nine, man. It's like <laughs> gotta help the aliens get home and shoot at corrupt mercenaries, and you're piloting a giant alien mech. It's like. <laughs> Well, I don't think it's going to go quite that point because I don't think it's like alien mech, but it could be it like, I mean, again, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, Full Metal Panic, I mean, it kind of had that bit of blend. Like I did have mecha in it. I mean, it was like a sort of a blend of a bit of comedy, but also more like military action type. Uh, and story generic well. Harriman school life bullshit. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, we'll see. We'll see. It could be it could be cool. Some people were hoping for this one from J Novel Club. One of their hints was um, Abe's Final Solution or something like that. And oh, yeah. people thought it was referring to, um, I guess, is it the prime minister in Japan, uh, Abe or Abe, whatever his name is? Yeah. Um, they thought, you know, it was saying like foreigners from another world were going to come in and repopulate Japan because, you know, there's been a little bit of a, a birth crisis and population crisis a little bit. Right. In Japan, um, but um, instead we got "Welcome to Japan, Miss Self," which you'll get to. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we will. It's it's about eight things down the list, oh. sweet Lord. But um, then we have. Uh, I mean, this one's kind of a. Well, I don't know. Anyway, it's kind of like a blend of anime, manga, light novel news. Uh, the Naruto Shinden novels are getting an anime. This was a. Uh, they actually did it, I guess, for the anniversary of, was it for Shonen Jump? Or I can't remember. Uh, anyway, there were three brand new light novels that came out. And there it features like uh, Naruto, Sasuke, and um, Shikimaru. And it's all set during the Boruto, Boruto timeline. Like it's when they're all fathers. And so each one focused on each of them in a different sort of point with their kids or whatever. I don't know. I don't know the whole story. I just know that when I did the top 10, the things were super stupid popular and we're always in the top 10 for each volume and it's naruto of course it's popular anyway they're getting an anime adaptation uh so you can look for them apparently i think it's in february they're they're bringing those out so i don't know if they they haven't said whether it's going to be just like a they're going to be filling in boruto's time slot with those or whether they're going to be like in addition to it i don't know uh we'll see uh let's see what else do we have here uh now we'll move out of the anime news and get into some other stuff uh first off this one's kind of interesting so haruhi, haruhi suzumiya 
the novels are being re-released, but they're being released by Karokawa Bunko, and they're actually being released with photographic covers, and they're being released as more of a novel type adaptation as opposed to being marketed as light novels. So, uh, no, I mean, that series is, uh, and I, I'm kind of curious to see what they do because that series, uh, we went a long time with nothing. And then I know the author just recently did like a short story that was published and it was like the first thing that they had written in the Haruhi world in years. And, and I'm, I haven't read the whole series. It never really ended, right? Like it just kind of stopped. Is that right? Does anybody know? Yeah, it, um, yeah, it just kind of, okay, this is where it's stopping, not ending, but stopping. And I was like, that's mm. kind of it. Okay. So, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if this will signal sort of them trying to rebrand Haruhi and bring it back or whether this is just them saying, here's a popular title we can milk for more money. It's probably that, but, uh, yeah. well, we'll see. I mean, wasn't Haruhi like the weeb religion for like a long time? Haruhiism? <laughs> well... Uh, I mean, certainly Haruhi, uh, I, I mean, a lot of people, when you're talking like light novels and the popularity of light novels, and particularly the popularity of light novels getting adapted into anime, Haruhi is certainly one of the titles a lot of people talk about. Um, I mean, definitely it was a number of years after light novels had already started becoming popular, but I mean, it, it certainly was a big hit for its time. And I think brought more focus onto light novels and light novels as a source of anime. Um, I mean, like I said, again, it's it. other titles have done it before, but I think it just kind of refocused it and yes, yeah, sort of gave birth to its own little kind of weeb religion, I guess. I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, now uh, also just in sort of other, or various news uh invaders of the roku joma is getting a drama cd to celebrate its 10th anniversary it's a voice so the voice actors from the anime that came out a number of years ago are coming back to do this drama cd and it's being packed with volume 31 of the light novel series it's amazing how much it can happen in an eight square tatami mat apartment for 1000 right? yen a month <laughs> <laughs> and and that was kind of my thing i was like you know what this isn't really like big news i mean whatever they bring out drama cds all the time to celebrate things but i was like but dude i just want to say it's volume 31 <laughs> i mean i know that's not as crazy as some other series but like particularly for a series that we do have available in english like that's pretty wild that it's that long uh because a lot of english publishers have really been sketchy about getting into series that are that long you know, for, for obvious reasons, right? So anyway, uh, and then in the last of our non-licensing news, Square Enix has announced that they are putting out a certain Magical Index smartphone game and that supposedly it's going to be some kind of RPG. So I don't know if that's ever going to come out in English. It wouldn't surprise me though, because, you know, Square needs all the money they can get apparently. Uh, so then we'll get into, there's actually been a number of light novels licensed that have been announced. Uh, first off, Cross Infinite World has licensed a light novel series called Beast's Blood. Uh, there's apparently two volumes. Uh, it's, it's finished. There's only two volumes. Uh, it is described as a steamy science fiction romance novel. Desperate to escape her successful sister's shadow, Euphemia seeks independence as a biotech researcher fixated on destroying knights, a dangerous narcotic sought across the colonies. She never believed her life was in danger until a group of men pulled her from her car at gunpoint. Euphemia had also never met a beast blood, the non-human subspecies with animalistic qualities, until she was rescued by one. I have a quick question. <laughs> okay. Is this series about bestiality? Just just wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> Zelade is a muta hunter and a beast blood. When his hunt is interrupted by Euphemia's attackers, he saves her on a whim. Never expecting to see Euphemia again, he's shocked to receive a job protecting the spunky researcher who just might be his lifelong mate. 
Follow Euphemia and Zelade as they navigate a colony world brimming with peculiar beasts, powerful narcotics, dangerous criminals, powerful and a narcotics. Buddy, and, no, no, let me finish. And a budding interspecies romance. Ah, there you go, bio. So bestiality. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I, you know what, man? Um, like, I'll give Cross Infinite World credit. Like, they have put out some pretty good stuff uh, that I have checked out. And some of their stuff, they definitely go for titles that I don't think anybody else would go for. Um, I do appreciate that they're trying to reach out and stretch out. I mean, this is a sci fi, which we really don't have. Actually, I can't really think of any science fiction light novels we have officially Does licensed. Legend of the Galactic Heroes count? Well, I know, yeah, Legend of the Galactic Heroes is close. Uh, all you need is kill. Is it's kind not of... sci-fi, it's the sci-fi. <laughs> Clockwork Planet? Yeah, Clockwork Planet. Yeah, you're right. So there's a couple, but but I mean, in terms of like, you know, strictly being considered light novels, mm, it's a little fudgy, but yeah, whatever, it's all good, man. However, then we got a couple of other ones. Uh, first off, from Yen On. Uh, we got a um, the survived alchemist with a dream of quiet town life. Uh, there's currently five volumes in Japan as of January. The fifth volume is coming out this month. 200 years ago, the kingdom of Endelgia was destroyed by the monsters of the demon forest. The sole survivor is an alchemist named Mariella, who managed to escape through suspended animation. When she wakes up two centuries later, she learns that alchemists have gone extinct and potions are now at a high premium. But what does the last alchemist standing want more than anything else? A laid back, quiet town life. This is giving me vibes of like Full Metal Alchemist, except there are no alchemists around. <laughs> and instead of actually like doing something exciting, she's just like chilling like a villain. <laughs> I've actually been playing uh, some Atelier games, and this really reminds me of Atelier because you know it's it's about uh, presumably making potions and doing all that kind of stuff, but wanting a quiet life, that kind of stuff. And so uh, I'm kind of interested in this. Well, I mean it. It'll depend on what kind of uh route it takes yeah. it'll be interesting to see uh it'll be interesting to see whether it goes like the i've been killing slimes for 300 years route which is you know super laid back just kind of like you know heartwarming family comedy with a little bit of action or whether it goes with the more you know i want a quiet life but my life is anything but quiet kind of route you know what i mean like yeah yeah because if she she's like the last alchemist and people who have heard of alchemists you know they're, they're going to regard her as like this rarity and maybe people want to learn alchemy from her. Like I'm just imagining her chilling and it's just like <laughs> knocking at a door. It's like, what, what, what is it? It's 12 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Teach us alchemy. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a potion. God damn it. Um, like, I mean, I could see. Give me money. Yeah. Like I could, I could see it going different ways. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, then we have uh, the only other thing that Yenon announced light novel wise was Little Witch Academia, the nonsensical witch and the country of fairies. Uh, in the novel, Akko takes a trip to a hill where fairies gather and meets the hill's guardian, Sifra. When Akko finds out that Sifra's dog and cat are missing, she sets out with Lottie and Susie to find them. So it, it, it's like they're going off to find somebody's dog and cat? Like, I. Okay. Um, anyway, apparently uh, Frog was saying on Twitter that this is actually like a kid's novel, uh, that, that it was, that's how it was marketed in Japan, was like actually for a younger demographic. Yeah, those green covers, I've seen mm -hmm. them before. Like um, some of the Kirby novels have those as well. And yeah. uh, I think the Nichiju novel also has that. Yeah, they're marketed for kids. Yeah, well, I know that one of the things that sets them apart is that they actually have... Um, uh, instead of all the con like if the kanji's a little bit more con convoluted they actually put like what was the the hiragana F furigana like the other, furigana okay um so yeah so they actually will 
they do kind of like tone down the writing to make it easier for young kids to read. Uh, you know, actually, when uh, Your Name, the movie came out, uh, they published two versions of it. So they published the novel version, and then they also published a green order version like this as well that was aimed so that younger kids could read it with uh, more ease so yeah so this definitely is a, apparently a, aimed at a bit of a younger subset uh, but I guess Yen is picking it up and uh, releasing it as a light novel uh, I don't know how entertaining it'll be for you know Little Witch Academia fans but uh, well you know I guess if well you if you're a young series... kid and watch this channel we, you, you, you've now got a bone if, if it's aimed for kids, does that mean there's going to be no Yuri? Um, like, like what are you talking about flies? We need to brainwash them early. Get your, get your facts right. <laughs> it'll be like it'll be probably. I would say it'll be toned down. How about that? <laughs> I don't think it'll be gone entirely. Anyway, subtle uh, brainwashing. Then... <laughs> Good plan. <laughs> exactly. Go subtle. You always try to go subtle. Okay. Uh, so also then we get to Jay Novel Club, who's announced a couple of licenses. Uh, first off, uh, we will do the ones that they have actually officially announced. First off was I Shall Survive Using Potions. Uh, there's apparently four volumes in Japan. Uh, the fourth volume is actually coming out this month. One day, the supervisor in charge of watching over Earth was taking care of a distortion when they made a mistake that caused Kaoru Nagase to lose her physical body. Not only that, but reincarnating her into a different, less culturally advanced world is the only thing they can offer to do for her. Not one to take this turn of events sitting down, Kaoru makes a demand, the power to create potions at any time she pleases with whatever effects she wants it to have. And it doesn't stop there either. She asks for a magical item box, the ability to understand and speak every language, and the same body she had back when she was a 15-year-old girl. Using her newfound powers, Kaoru has to try and make a stable life for herself in a whole new world. Like, okay, so it's an isekai where cheat ability, but it's to do with potions. Again, potions. Potions is the new light novel thing. Walter, <laughs> Walter White would love. Walter White would love this chick. <laughs> I, I was, I was kind of hoping it'd be more like. Well, I don't know, obviously, but from the synopsis, it sounds like it's more of a cheat skill. Like she can just like conjure a potion. I was hoping yeah. it was more like potion creation. And I know there are some novels that kind of do that. Um, like Strongest Gamer did a little bit of a potion creation thing. But, yeah. But yeah. yeah. I mean, it. Mm -hmm. yeah, it does. It does definitely happen. But yeah, it sounds like she's. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe the description's a little bit off. But yeah, it does. It makes it sound like it makes it sound like without effort, she basically can just grab a beaker and be like, I want a healing potion. And it's there, you know, <laughs> yeah. like or like I want a healing potion. She just pours water into it and it turns into a healing potion. I don't know. I, I yeah, uh, it'll be interesting to see. We'll we'll see what it looks like. Hopefully, it's a little more complex than just that. Because yeah, um, then they licensed cooking with wild game. Now, I'm gonna be honest. When I heard this, I was like, oh man, this is some brand new series jumping on the whole cooking bandwagon. But it has 16 volumes. Yeah. <laughs> like as of January, they're releasing the 16th volume in Japan. Like this stuff has been going on for a while. Like this is a longer series. I was very surprised by that. Uh, yeah, move over isekai. It's now cooking and potion class. Well, this actually is an isekai, funny enough. <laughs> it's a hybrid. It, it's now isekai, potion making, cooking. That's the new trend. That, that's it. Exactly. Exactly. This is, you know what? The new trend in isekai is no longer magical or fighting abilities. It is now making potions or cooking good food. That is the new isekai. Uh, anyway, uh, chef trainee Asuta Tsurumi was just a normal Japanese teenager until one day the harassment against his family's restaurant went too far. Desperate to save his father's precious cooking knife, he dove headfirst into a sea of flames. Uh, uh, I, already, I'm thinking this guy's not too smart. This guy has priority anyway, straight. Uh, <laughs> right? Uh, rather than waking up in the afterlife, though, he found himself in a whole new world entirely. Fortunately for our hero, he soon gets picked up by the huntress known as Ai Fa. This guardian angel packs some attitude, though, so it won't be all smooth sailing for Asuta. 
Plus, his savior seems to have some issues of her own to worry about, too. Just how well will our rookie chef be able to parlay his skills in this utterly unfamiliar world? And with all the danger lurking around, will he even be able to survive long enough to put them to the test? Come learn a thing or two about cooking with wild game. So I have a there. feeling this woman is like some Amazonian Valkyrie that just rescues him and just says like, ah, you're a good house husband. Come to my village. <laughs> uh, like when you look at the front cover, that kind of, uh, that's legit. I think that's the vibe. <laughs> really? I didn't even see the cover. Oh, like it's like this really like badass huntress kind of elfish looking girl or something standing behind this dude looking like he's all like, I got to cook something awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the dude, the dude's kind of like tossing this meat between his hands. And uh, when I first saw it, I thought he was levitating it for some reason. I did. So too. when this was, <laughs> yeah, when this was first announced, I, I posted a meme where I compared this uh, cover to the photo of the guy levitating the slice of pizza with his mind. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that would be awesome if he could like cook with friggin' telekinesis. Come on, I'd be that like, would be cool. Like, that would be My way husband's cooler. better than yours. He can f- <laughs> he can cook things mid ear. <laughs> <laughs> he can float his meat. What? <laughs> anyway. <You> can- <laughs> Imagine all the positions you could do if he could fly with you. Mid-ear, uh, hang time. <laughs> oh, yeah, you man. could cook food while you're delivering it. Uh, that, right? It would be a whole other kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, so that's that's coming out. But I, you know what? Again, this is one of those things where, like, I read it and I'm kind of like, I don't know, man. But then when I see there's 16 volumes, I'm like, man, this must go somewhere interesting because, like, how the hell has it survived 16 volumes if it isn't at least a little decent? You know what I mean? Um, like... A few phrases. Fendom am an Amazonian harem. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> that initial setup, though, like that he ran into a burning building for a <laughs> night. Like, I understand. I, I don't know. Is it like comedy? He needs or that knife it... to slash his own wrist for failure. He, dis- <laughs> he disgraced his ancestors <laughs> and his father's disgrace. He needs to kill himself. No, oh, man. He's in like, public dad. he's like dad i'm going to get the you have failed us as a father i'm going to get your knife so you can p- commit howdy cutty right here for, <laughs> <laughs> regain your honor oh no i don't know man like but it does seem kind of like like of all the ways to die you're kind of like dude really like i mean it was bad enough that truck coon had to kill so many people but now we got people <laughs> diving into fires on their own like of their own volition that seems is a this a regular outside. thing in japan like it's just <laughs> oh no the family knife just dash just dash into the fire the oh knife. no i'm burning oh wait i'm being isekai <laughs> yay <laughs> i'm in a new world but wait, still need to cook. dying in a fire is a really horrific dragon. way to die especially for an isekai well, you're right. That's legit. Like, because a lot of isekais, it's usually quick, right? Yeah, like, it's usually like a stab. It's a car or like you're just transported or something. I think Blue Steel yeah. Blasphemer also had the um, the hero and his sister dying in a fire to start that off, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People like the Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess they just figure like it's I mean, usually it's it's some kind of reason i'm kind of wondering if like he has a, a psychological right? fear of fire yeah because that's how he uh, died i don't know man anyway so then finally and this one's kind of funny uh because uh terrence you were the one who discovered this one right you yeah kind of data, yeah you kind of data mind it <laughs> So, yeah, I just had it on my bookwalker list. Like, I had seen it, and obviously we were just talking about um, the hint was um, Abe's, you know, last solution. And I was like, oh, well, if it's about, you know, Japan's population crisis, I kind of threw that out there. Somebody else threw out another title, and I was like, oh, well, this one. I've seen this one. I know it's getting a manga as well, so maybe. And, of yeah. course, it happens. <laughs> Yeah, I'm calling so it. The ti- <laughs> <laughs> so the title is called Welcome to Japan, Miss Elf. Uh, there are currently two volumes out in Japan. I think it's still ongoing. Uh, Kazuhiro Kitase's main hobby is sleeping. Ever since he was young, he would enter a world within his dreams and go on exciting adventures. As he grew older, he became acquainted with a female elf 
and the two have now been united through a dragon's brand. As he wakes up one day, he notices a familiar figure sleeping next to him, the elf girl from his dreams. Join Kazuhiro on his new adventures through Japan with the lovely Miss Elf. Uh, one thing, one thing I've heard is it's a, um, it seems like it turns into partially again another food novel. I don't know. Um, I've looked at some of the, the images like from inside, and it looks like it gets a little more grander than just the main character and this girl. Like there's more. Um, fantasy characters that will come into the plot, I think. Um, hmm. But yeah, initially well, it does look like it. It like the cover obviously has food on it, so it's like that is a big draw for the series too. Hmm. Well, I mean, they've got a. I'm just like really. I mean, as much as I would love to visit Japan, as much as I am sure there would be a great deal that I would like to see in Japan, I just can't imagine a light novel about just touring a, an elf around Japan being really exciting or awesome to yeah, read and Let's specifically say. touring her around to eat <laughs> i was gonna say though as an anime because they've had anime where it like featured different restaurants and stuff like that right as an anime it would probably be an awesome concept because then you get the whole tourism japan behind it and like you know actually feature real restaurants and stuff like hey, that... i was already sold on going to japan i'm already sold you don't need to make it the pot even sweeter with elf <laughs> chicks <laughs> But I, but I am interested in having that we're finally getting these food novels like this one, like that other one um, that you mentioned earlier. And then we're also getting um, Seven Seas Restaurant to Another World. Like I do like yep. that we're at least getting this kind of like niche genre here finally. Well, and they're more like the reverse isekai, right? Like it's it's mm -hmm. sort of we're moving and we're moving to the point where it's not just a good old I'm an average Japanese person taking to another world. We're now going the other way, right? Where it's either the restaurant has a portal that goes between or, you know, like this one, right? Where it's basically a, a fantasy figure coming in to modern day Japan. So, yeah, I, um, you know, I, well, I mean, you know what? They've got to try and expand it out a bit, right? So, and I mean, these cooking ones, like there's been lots of anime that have done very well with the whole cooking theme and, you know, there's lots of popular manga that are the cooking theme, so it's not too surprising that light novels are starting to follow suit. Um, the only other thing that I guess I'll mention is just uh, J Novel Club also licensed, uh, the, in terms of manga, because J Novel Club's doing manga now, which we discussed a while back, um, they also have licensed An Archdemon's Dilemma, How to Love Your Elf Bride, um, as well as I Will Survive Using Potions, so they actually licensed both the light novel and the manga. And the manga version of The Magic in This Other World is Too Far Behind. So a couple of light novel titles that uh, J Novel Club has now gone ahead and picked up the manga adaptations as well. So and there you go. I also called Animata, <laughs> which also got uh, licensed by them, but I called that one in the forums too, I swear. <laughs> okay, but that one's a manga, isn't it? <laughs> that one That one is a manga, like original ma manga. pure manga. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I only worried about the stuff that was based on light novels, but uh, but you know, if you want to like, you know, I'm patting take myself. Your credit. Yeah, patting myself yeah. on the back. Yeah, okay. give yourself a little credit. It's cool, man. It's cool. I gotta admit, <laughs> I've never once guessed any of J Novel Club stuff right. So, uh, so yeah, yeah, it's all good, man. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, so, my God, that is the news. Wow, there was I was not kidding. That that was like half an hour worth of news. Uh, that was legit. Um, okay, so with all of that said, let us move ahead to the actual reason that we joined each other tonight, which is to talk about 2018, uh, the highs for us in terms of our personal reading of light novels, and also then to talk about stuff we would love to see licensed come this year, because, yeah, you know, these they're starting to do licensed announcements. We're recording this uh, on Tuesday, January 8th, I'm hoping to have it up the, uh, by the end of this week. And by the end of this week, we potentially could have at least another, well, one or two light novels announced from Seven Seas because they've now teased that they're going to start announcing stuff tomorrow, uh, being Wednesday. So, uh, so yeah, so who knows? Maybe one of the titles we talk about tonight will actually be licensed by the end of this week. It could happen. Oh, it could happen. <laughs> Or they'll just announce a whole bunch of manga and then they'll announce one light novel. I don't know. <laughs> uh, 
All right. So uh, we've decided that what we're going to do is we're going to each go through our top three, and then we're going to go through the three that we want. So we'll start off with Flies. Flies, tell us, what did you love reading in 2018? Okay. So uh, my first pick for my favorite series that I read last year is volumes 19 and 20 of Spice and Wool. And uh, I liked it because Spice and Wolf was a series that was supposed to end a couple of volumes earlier, and then the author for his 10th, 10th anniversary for the series decided to pick the series back up and continue writing it alongside with its uh, sequel series. And Yen Nan has released uh, two volumes of the series last year, and it basically is... It's kind of like an epilogue arc, but that uh, the spring log arc is pretty much just like an epilogue arc after their adventures have already ended. And it's just uh, spoilers. It's just about Holo and Lawrence enjoying their married life in the uh, Neo Hero when they have their hot spring business. And volume 19 in particular was probably my favorite read of the year because it had. It, it's mo spring log is mostly just a bunch of short a couple of short stories each book and it really builds on the romance of the of both characters and like you can really tell if you follow the series enough that like they've been together for so long that uh they're nothing like what they were at the beginning of the story where holo is pretty much outsmarting lawrence at every turn they're pretty much like completely completely even when it comes to bickering with each other. And it's also them worrying about their daughter who is off on her own adventure if you want to read the sequel series as well. Yeah, that's a wolf and parchment, right? Yeah. it It's kind of like the same as Spice and Wolf, but instead of being about a traveling merchant with a wolf, go with a, uh, wolf girl, it's more of a traveling, like, practicing saint or, like, priest than economics instead hmm. so like if you're if you're into the whole like medieval religion sort of thing then you'll probably like it uh hmm. i think it's i still think it's good i don't like it as much but i it's mostly just the character i read it for the characters over the uh over that little plot point the whole religion aspect and stuff but right seeing as how they are my uh holo and lawrence are my favorite light novel couple out of all the series that i've read it's just a if you're a huge fan of the series it's a good read uh next would be toradora i've read the first two volumes i i've already finished the entire series because i read fan translations before this was like maybe like five years ago that i read all the fan translations and if you've seen the anime it's a pretty page for page adaptation and i just like it because we really don't have that many school life light novels licensed like i think yeah. the only the only other real one that we kind of have is my love romantic comedy but that one's more of a uh has more of a, a jaded main character who is <laughs> uh whether you it's a, a toss-up whether you like the guy or not or like you like his narrations and how like bitter he is but I, I just find Ryuji and Taiga's relationship to be really interesting, even even if it's pretty obvious from the first book that like you know exactly how the the series is going to end. It's more about like the journey. I like the journey more than the uh, than being spoiled for the destination sort of thing. Yeah, like I read the first. I've read the first volume. I've got the second one on my shelf, and I agree. Like, yeah, you you know where it's going to go, but. But it's half the fun of, of seeing how it's going to get there. And then my last one is uh, probably a guilty pleasure. I picked uh, A Sister is All You Need because you always got to read some trash with the good stuff. <laughs> and basically because each volume isn't really that long. I think on average, they're like, with the minus the illustrations and stuff, I think they're like 150 pages long each. And I can, I've only read the first two because there's only two out right now. The next, the third one comes out this month. And yeah. I 
can sit down and read an entire volume in one sitting, which isn't very common because I'm not that I'm not the fastest reader. So even for like a series like Spice and Wolf or like it's my favorite series, it takes me maybe two to three sessions to read it. Like I can just blast through it. This is just all you need in one sitting because like the characters are the characters are so funny and like the situations are so out of note, like uh, out of this world, I guess. And the comedy like is my type of comedy. So if you're into all that hypersexualized, like insane comedy, it's a series that I recommend. Cool. All right. Bio Gundam, what did you enjoy in 2018? Um, I think this year came with like a lot of surprises, but I think some of the series that surprised me the most was um the faraway paladin um infinite dendrogram and how a realist hero rebuild the kingdom so with faraway paladin i i think what impressed me about it was the world building and the level of consistency consistency it has like it has the world has rules and those rules don't bend for anyone not even the main character and it also feels like to me like a D&D game, and I absolutely love it. You know, he is a paladin, he's going out and adventuring and stuff, he's getting his party together, and um, I really enjoy the characters. You know, it's like, it's a really good adventure series. You know, they all, it's like, it's similar to Goblin Slay in that vein, except I feel like the characters have a bit more depth and don't feel as um, stereotypy. And hmm. even though it is a reincarnation isekai, I like the fact that the main character is using it as a chance to improve and not just waste all his life on the computer or, you know, watch anime all day, which is kind of hypocritical because I also do that sometimes. But, you know, he's, you know, <laughs> he's taking in strides. You know, he, you know, I'm going to live my life. I've made a pact with this god and I'm going to be a paladin and I'm going to get into adventures and I'm going to, you know, you know, live up to the standards that my adopted parents gave me. And honestly, I love the first volume where, like, it's the undead raising him. It's very heartwarming. Because when you usually yeah. see, like, undead creatures, they're usually, like, these evil, malicious, cruel, and calculating creatures. But it's just, like, they're just normal people who made a bad choice in life, and and this is the result of that. They're now just the undead, okay? They made some bad choices, and that's what some, some people are like that, you know? Because, you know, the greatest horror of all is that some of those monsters that you're fighting, they were once ordinary people. Um, for Infinite Dendrogram, I mean, I've already mentioned some of my positives about the series of the prior podcast but i i just like it i like it that it captures the the thrill of playing a video game it's you know trying to explore characters you know it's not some sort of fetishy harem is it trying to be fan service it's just like i'm gonna play this video game and it's so realistic and there's mysteries and you gotta figure it out and it's just fun and i've got a waifu that can you know it's very much vengeance is mine death metal album cover inserted here you know it's lots of fun and um how a realist hero rebuild the kingdom? Well, I like history and also Machiavellianism rules. Mic drop done. <laughs> well, I mean, we did talk about that. That's another one we did a podcast on where I think many of us went on at length about why we liked that particular series. So, all right, cool. Jean Luc, what were your big reads of 2018? All right, so uh, my big read, uh, surprisingly enough, uh, probably because of the podcast in itself, but um, there was a lot of stuff that I wanted to read that I they're still on my shelves. But uh, on the upside, like I s started a lot of new series that maybe I might not have uh, read it if it was not for the, the podcast. Starting at uh, top three, I have um, Defeating the Demon Lord's a Cinch, if you've got a ringer, whatever uh, okay. a ringer might be. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, th this one came to me uh, in a period where uh, I had a lot of uh, job-related frustration and the main character... He's so much fun to read. Like, he's stuck in a situation where he has to literally babysit a bunch of, uh, like, uh, incompetence. <laughs> yes. And uh, basically, like, 
it's an isekai not isekai like the the main character is not the one who's been transferred to uh, that fantasy world but more like the super kick-ass priest level 93 that has to uh kind of uh babysit the the hero in her party as they grow in um uh, in strength and level like they, they're they start literally like i think level five or something and by the end of the first book they're like an average of 20 yeah. and they all think that this main character like uh, aris like he's like he's a very competent at, at what he does and he's not really this uh religious priest is more like an uh, uh eradicator you, you know what it reminded me of man um <laughs> and, and pardon my french but uh it's a movie quote you did you guys ever see the movie from dusk till dawn yep nope okay well sorry to hear that basically it's about a group of people who get trapped in this this building that's filled with vampires and one of the pre and one of them is a priest but he's lost his faith and of course, he can't bless holy water or anything because he's got no faith. And so, finally, one of the guys looks at him and he goes, "Father, you need to ask yourself: Are you going to be a mean motherfucking servant of God, or just some <laughs> lousy priest who's lost his faith?" <laughs> <laughs> and when I was reading this book, like you know, the ringer, I was like, "Man, you're a mean motherfucking servant of God." <laughs> oh yes, he is. But it. It's just a feeling like you read through the book and every time he just goes into a like rage, he just blow off steam at his boss. And like these moron, like they, they went ahead and did this, they did that. And his boss is just, well, it's your job. <laughs> Go back there. So. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I agree. I like that whole thing where he would just blow off and there's, Boss, like, yeah, you, you you signed up for this job. You got to do it. <laughs> so, what was your what was your second pick? Yeah, my second pick. Uh, now we're starting to go a bit more like uh, less action and more like emotional novel. And uh, this one is uh, World End. What do you do at the end of the world? Are you busy? Will you save us? Well, it's a really really great book i mean for the amount of action that's in it and i read the first two volume and of course uh, of course i saw the anime but uh, like just judging by the 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 book themselves there's not a lot of action in there but it's still my second best read of uh, 2018 because you really feel for the character like they're really it's like a broken down hero that tries to um like live life like like basically for those who doesn't know the the series like he's it's a in a fantasy world where uh the guys fight off these big gigantic invaders and eventually he is able to succeed but ends up being cursed and uh, being petrified for i think four or five hundred years and when he wakes up well the surface of the planet has been completely destroyed it's uh, an entire desert and the new uh well mankind humanity uh whatever you want to call them, uh, lives up on these floating islands. And basically, human have died, and it's all these fantasy rays that are there. And since he doesn't have uh, a place to belong and he doesn't have a purpose, uh, basically to pay his debt, he's sent to this, uh, this place that um, trains fairy warriors that are only small girls and they basically trains them with uh, the ancient sword that the human were using and just throws them 
to suicide mission against like a big monster that emerge soon after the destruction of humanity and completely ravage uh, the uh, the earth and uh, well basically you have this broken down hero that tries to find a purpose in life and it's not always like fun or like um oh the series is gonna make me ugly cry at some point yeah. i'm pretty sure like definitely like snot tears like it's just not gonna be like yeah it's a good thing i don't i'm not gonna read that one in public not because not because like jk haru where I may they may look over my shoulder and see something dirty <laughs> but but just because i can't read it in public because i'm gonna be like a mess at some point i know it's gonna happen <laughs> Well, anyway, it's really a really good read. It's uh, you really feel for the character, and uh, like you, you hope it's gonna get better. But uh, yeah, those who saw the anime, well, uh, <laughs> don't spoil it. I'm reading it. I haven't watched the yeah. anime. <laughs> well, I read the book because there's <laughs> a lot of stuff that, well, the anime kind of end on like an ending that doesn't feel like an ending mm. and there's a lot of stuff that don't uh get explained so and even in the first book there's a lot of detail and stuff that are um really uh like uh, satisfying yeah okay so moving on to um my top one yes and uh for like Maybe from the past few podcasts, uh, you might have heard me uh, talk about that one a lot. Uh, one that I didn't think I didn't enjoy that much, but I did. And I recommend people to read it if like the, the title doesn't uh, put you down. And that is, uh, J.K. Haru is a sex worker in another world. Wow, and, and I just mentioned that title too. Yeah. <laughs> and... Well, the, yeah, that's closer to a legit novel than a light novel, but still a really, really good read. Even if you just dismiss the whole uh, sexual theme, like the book, the way it's um, like um, structured, it's really well done. It takes you through a lot of... Uh, a roller coaster emotional ride like start the book and you don't really know what to expect and then you kind of um the first part of the book is a bit more of um it's a kind of uh documentary on the life of a prostitute and each chapter kinds of explore uh you have the, like this new customer every chapter and it kind of es explored like the human psyche, like uh, all the fetishism and like stuff that you, you would find in uh, that industry. And like eventually it kind of merged into this old fantasy novel thing. And like, I don't want to spoil anything in that one because like just the, I didn't see it coming like there's a big plot twist like in the two-third of the book and it's really really blew me off like it's blew my mind like it's wow like uh, I didn't didn't expect like to read a book this good uh, especially around that theme like uh, it was really well done like it, there's nothing like I didn't feel like there was anything inappropriate and yeah so like if like reading about sexual description like doesn't deter you like read it it's really good read it's only one book like that's it that's my big wow of 2018 <laughs> I, you know what and you weren't the only one uh, I, I saw a lot of people talking about that book and uh I, I admit i have to i have to check uh, that is definitely one that i have on my must read list this uh coming soon uh all right kyle how about you give us your top three 
All right. So my top three of uh, 2018, I've actually ranked them. So uh, let's see if that stirs up any controversy or whatnot. But I'll start with my number three. It's uh, So I'm a Spider, So What? And so Hell in yeah. Tw- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm loving this series. Um, this year we got volumes uh, two through four. And so if you, you know, um, the first volume was okay, so so. Um, but volume two is where it really kicks into high gear with um, yeah. just the great development that they have at the end, making you realize that. Uh, I'll try not to spoil it, but yeah, that things aren't quite connected the way you think they might be. And then volume yeah. three, we got, um, you know, delving further into um, the dungeon and uh, and then the other characters, aside from Spider-Girl, um, they've got this whole war that's brewing that's going on. And then volume four, we got the final uh, grand conclusion to the dungeon, plus uh, what's it's speci- uh, supposed to be um, a great big transition for the uh, other kids' side. And so it's just really fun, really action-packed. Um, Spider-Girl is a great protagonist, a great voice for this type of story and it's just Mm. really been great i love this series yeah i i I was really surprised by it when i read volume two because i thought volume one like you i was like it's good i mean i think i really like it just because spider girl is entertaining to read but then i read volume two and i was like oh my god i need to keep going with this my copy's (laughs) on its way from the library soon i hope (laughs) <laughs> it's totally worth it. Volume two, like if volume two doesn't hook you, I don't know any light novel that's <laughs> going to manage to do it. So yeah. All right. Sorry. Yeah. Go on Kyle. <laughs> All right. And so for my number two pick, um, this one almost has an asterisk by it. And my number two pick is, is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon? So overall, this has been a really great, you know, just straight up a uh, fantasy series with, uh, you know, sort of RPG like elements to help the reader digest it. But this year in 28 or last year in 2018, we only got two volumes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it really hard to think about it, just how uh, quickly they've been pumping these out. And, you know, every time the series, uh, you know, releases a volume, you know, I drop anything to read it, you know, whatever I'm currently going through. But in, so this year we saw volumes 11 and 12 and uh, volume 11 sees the end, I think of the five volume long series uh, or arc of the. Yeah it, yeah, it is the end of the arc. I can't remember how many. Yeah, the Zenos it, arc. It is, but yeah. Yeah. And um it's great, but I felt like it wasn't the big um impact that a lot of people were expecting it to be. And then uh volume twelve is uh essentially a transition between these two major uh story arcs. So it's a bit slower, even though there is even though it's almost volume 12 is almost completely, uh, you know, dungeon diving, just an mm. entire volume on that. And kind of funny that a volume that's 100% dungeon diving is the kind of cooling off period with this series. <laughs> yeah. I've always said, it's funny that for one that has dungeon in the title, how little they're actually in the dungeon. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, yeah, they were, I mean, they were good, solid uh, volumes. You know, maybe if we got, you know, 10 this year instead of the end of last year, then I would have put it at number one. But it's just kind of stuck at number two. Mm. And so my number one pick of the year 
is actually a volume one where we only got one, uh, you know, volume the entire year. And then it would happen to be the first one. And it's my next life as a villainous, all routes lead to doom or otherwise, <laughs> otherwise known as a uh, Baccarina. Baccarina. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Um, I picked up the manga, uh, through various sources, um, <laughs> earlier this year, the first volume. And whenever I went through it, I was just absolutely, uh, blown away. So I was super excited whenever they announced that they were releasing it in English. And whenever I picked up the first volume of the light novel, it was, it blew me away. I was, I was absolutely hysterical. It's the, one of the funniest light novels, um, since, uh, Konosuba. It's just one of the ones I'm reading it out in public and I'll just burst out laughing. That's just, how hilarious it can be. And it's really got, um, I'd say, um, heartfelt protagonist as Katarina Kleiss. And it's just been great reading it through. And it's really not even the meat of the story yet. And that'll be uh, in volume two. But in volume one, all you have are just character introductions. And, you know, that's the entirety of the volume, just this uh, childhood arc where she's coming to meet all the other um, potential uh, love interests for the uh, Otome game that she's been reincarnated into. And we haven't even seen the Otome protagonist or the one who's going to lead Katarina to doom yet that'll be saved for volume two but man I just couldn't believe how just great this introduction introductory volume was and apparently it sold really really well as well I hope so because yeah I agree with you it uh definitely one of the most entertaining light novels in terms of just pure like comedy value like I said it's one of those ones where like you know, when you have a dense main character, they can be either they can turn you off or they can be absolutely entertaining as can be. And Katarina definitely fits into that second category. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. All right. Jeez, the way things are going, I'm not even going to have my top three to talk about because they've already been pretty much nailed down. All right. Uh, moving along, Tom, what were your favorite reads of 2018? Okay, so my first one has to be uh infinite dendrogram and i chose it uh for the great storytelling the fantastic art and for being in my opinion emphasis on my opinion the best vr <laughs> mmo light novel series in english so far i don't think many people here are gonna fight you over it yeah on. <laughs> <laughs> my second one is uh katana gatari now, even though I've uh, missed the podcast because of exams, I have enjoyed very much what I've read of Katana Gatari. The translation and its notes are just great, especially to people who want to learn more about translation or understand the book on a deeper level. Uh, the physical book itself is really good as well. I've talked about that a lot, actually. Uh, I really like the size of the book. I love the cover. Uh, and Katana Gatari is a license that I've wanted since around 2015, so it was very satisfying to not only get it, but have a release this extravagant. And yeah. I also want to mention that because I was supposed to be taking part in our podcast episode on it, but missed it, I'm making my own video that will eventually be released on my YouTube channel, Mature Purple, if anybody wants to see that in the future. <laughs> Search it, subscribe to it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so my final one is like very short as well. And it is just Zaragoto. Zaragoto is my favorite novel series in general of all time. Uh, I finally have finished the first book 
now. I have been reading it on and off for several years, different versions. <laughs> I started with the old Del Rey version, believe it or not, because I wow. have the old Del Rey versions, both of them. <laughs> I got that one too. <laughs> yeah. So I read like half of that one and then Vertical announced that they're doing it and they announced it like on my birthday, which was crazy. And so I was like, wow, so I'm going to wait for this and it's going to be great. And we have a second chance. And now we are, we're having our second chance. I finished the first book with its uh, better edit and it's great and I love it. And it's just it's, it's really good. And the second book, I'm reading the second book and it's really, really fantastic. I Yeah. Yeah. Another one where I thought the second book was better than the first volume. Yeah. Which you don't say often, I don't think, but uh definitely true for Zarigoto and very true for uh for Asoma Spider So What. Hmm. Yeah, and in my opinion it's pretty it's a pretty impressive thing to have its second book be better than the first, because I particularly liked the first one a lot. Hmm. Hmm. Well, who knows? Maybe this will be the year Vertical finally buckles and gives us the third book. Let's go. <laughs> Vertical, I know you might be listening. Come on, man. Hook it up. Hook it up. I've been actually messaging uh, the guy at Vertical. <laughs> I'm like, so, so Zarigoto, when are you guys going to pick up the rest of that? <laughs> He's like, not my department, man. <laughs> I'm like, come on. Have you seen uh, how many people are asking for three in like every single Vertical tweet? Uh, it's crazy. I know, right? Like, they can't tweet anything about a new license, and people are like, Zarigoto, Zarigoto, Zarigoto. I know. You'd think they'd take the hint. I, unless, unless you know, the 100 people requesting it are the only 100 people who bought it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I guess, but I don't know. I hope not, because like I said, I, I've liked it too, so hopefully they'll, re they'll keep on going with that one. Yeah. Cool. All right, Terrence. What did you read in 2018 that you love? All right. Well, everybody else already mentioned Infinite Dendrogram. I I'm pretty much just going to mention really quickly, I think it was volume four and five. We left off with volume three, which just kind of set up the arc that's going to happen in four and five. So that arc is really interesting. You know, I can't wait to get to it on the podcast. Um, we kind of have all of our characters in this Coliseum. We've got one of our, you know, great villain characters standing up on the stage ready to, you know, do whatever his master plan is. And, uh, yeah, it's just really interesting, um, that volume set and how they go about either solving the problem or just surviving the problem. Um, so I can't wait to get to that. Um, I also have on my list um, Daimao 7 and 8, which I just read, um, it's another one where it's this great, big, grandiose part of the story where you have sort of new villain or major villain coming in with a new villain adversary or ally. Um, you know, the, the crap kind of hits the fan, if you will, in their world. Um, major changes for Akuto, major changes for how the characters, you know, interact with him a little bit. Um, you know, certain characters, you know, like really jumping on the ally bandwagon for him as well. Um, so I really like um, 7 and 8. And uh, the final one, uh, I've got a f I've got two that I'm kind of debating. There's one that I'm actually in the middle of, which is Ameth. So I don't really want to count that because I didn't finish it yet. But I really like right. Ameth um, from Cross Infinite. Um but I'll just mention that briefly. Uh, it's just a really interesting take. It's not like it's, you know, it's fantasy, but it's not like fantastical creatures or anything. It's more of a church-led um, um, totalitarian society kind of control. Um, so it it does involve sort of mecha golem things. Um, mm -hmm. And it's got, um, one, of the, one of the appeals is basically that it's got two major couples in it, like two major uh, male and female couples, which I always like when there's a story that has multiple male leads and multiple couples and pairings. So yeah, I like that one so far. Um, and the final one I'll just mention really briefly, um, the magic in this other world is too far behind. I've only read um, the first two, but I just really like the intriguing setup for this one. Um, the fact that... Uh, 
basically it's about uh, the, these three heroes that get summoned. One of them is the, the real hero, and the other two are kind of tag-alongs. Um, they, get, they get to the palace, and the king is sort of asking them, hey, can you um, join the hunt for the demon king? Can you take him out uh, for us? And so the hero, the one that got the actual ability set, he's like, sure. And then um, the girl that is basically kind of his girlfriend, if you will, she's like, okay, yeah, I'll go with you. And then his buddy is like, what the hell are you two doing? What the hell are we doing? Why would we go and hunt a demon king? This is so dangerous. And then um, he's like, all right, uh, just send us home. Just send me home. And the king is like, oh, I'm sorry. We have no way to send you home. And he goes ballistic and like curses out the king. And it was just felt like the most sincere, like realistic, like depiction of like how someone would be if like they got put into this kind of scenario where you like actually fear that you're going to die in this other world doing this crazy thing for some guy you don't know. Um, and obviously the the twist is that he actually does have this this character actually does have magical ability that far surpasses the other characters. Um, so he's capable of taking out demons and things, but he's cautious. You know, um, there's some other titles that are coming down the line, like 2A, that are more comedic, whereas this one, it's a more realistic take on that kind of cautious hero who doesn't mm -hmm. want to die to something he's not prepared for. I think it's also the fact that this is like a whole new world and why the hell should he care? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, why I'm does I'm not going to risk care? my life for some random king. Like, what's he going to do for me? No. And, and if you think about it, like, in the sphere of we read all these light novel stories, there's probably thousands or millions of different worlds out there If if he's thinking, oh, this is just some random world. Why would he care about saving this one random world versus him just going home and doing his thing that he's been doing his whole life? Like, why I mean, would he Hank, want to? If he's him? got magic powers, why can't he use those magic powers to save his world or protect <laughs> his world? Yeah. <laughs> well, and they kind of get into that, like the you know they kind of get into the fact that he's been working on some magical thing on our world that he wants to get back to mm -hmm. and everything else and yeah and i mean there is that whole thing too where it's like you know add on top of that why the hell should i help you when you can't even promise i can go home at the end of this you know like you're basically telling me you've cursed me to be stuck in this world regardless of what happens mm -hmm. yeah like so. even if he like he can't go back home he's trapped in this world forever he has to live and die there man yeah so yeah, I mean, I I agree. I liked the setup of that one. I've only read the first volume so far, and Jay Novel's been pumping them out like one a month, so I'm way behind. But. Yeah, me too. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, well, I mean, honestly, other than one of my top three, two of them have already been talked about. Um, <laughs> and I mean, I did my own little video on the YouTube channel about it, so it's probably most everybody knows what I head is my top three but anyway uh at number three i had world end what do you do at the end of the world are you busy will you save us because again i i am with john luke uh i really liked sort of the emotional impact that whole story of a a former hero now just being reduced to basically an average man trying to find his way in a world that really wants nothing to do with him anymore um and i thought there was a lot of really cool aspects of it did the, the one thing that i absolutely loved about the book was how the swords were constructed um i don't want to get into it because i don't want to spoil anything but the way that these sort of powerful magical swords that they fight with are actually put together is awesome it's it's really one of my faves now at number two this is the title that you know nobody's actually mentioned is overlord uh this year i read volumes uh six and seven uh, so, uh, six, I thought was awesome. Seven was okay. I mean, certainly if you were reading Overlord to see Ainz Ol Ghul don't do all sorts of evil things to people, seven, I'm sure was very satisfying. <laughs> um, and then my number one pick was, is it wrong to try to pick up girls in a dungeon? And what's funny about that is that it's because I read volumes 10 and 11 this year. I didn't read volume 12. I didn't get a chance to. So 
where Kyle, when Kyle was saying, oh, if I had read 10 and 11, it probably would have been number one. I'm like, ah, that's this guy over here. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I really liked, uh, so yes, 10 and 11, uh, I thought they were really satisfying. I thought they would put Bell through some very uh, interesting emotional and moral dilemmas that uh, I, I thought the resolution of 11, like, I, I thought there was a certain really good part of the resolution of number 11, but then I thought maybe the how the whole Xenos thing got tied up was just a little, that was a little eh, for me, but uh, but the final battle part I thought was awesome. Yeah, it just kind of felt like it kind of like glossed it over, pushed it out of the way as quick as it could because it felt the volume was too long or something. I don't know. Yeah, but still, it was a really great volume and conclusion to that story arc. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, those are my top three for this year. Uh, you know, there's a, uh, yeah, so that was mine. Um all right, so that is 2018. That is the stuff that we read in 2018 that we liked most. But we figured that because it's uh, now the start of a brand new year, 2019, and uh, we are obviously just starting into the season of licensing announcements, we have many titles to look forward to. So we thought we'd talk about titles we'd like to see. Let's go back. Uh, Flies, tell us the three titles that you've got fingers crossed we actually see in English this year. So the first one I picked was a series that I have been spamming every single month in the Seven Seas questionnaire for like, I think the last six months. And it's Chivalry of a Failed Knight. And I picked it because we really need to have English licensors start an etchy uh, version of light novels since there's a lot of series that everyone seems to be asking for in requests like series like data live and uh chivalry and i think the what's what's another one that everyone's been asking for uh high school dxd i think so i think it'd be like light novels are already a niche market i guess and maybe that's why they're hesitating to do it but, like they can just market it as 18 plus so that they don't get into like trouble or whatever but i just like chivalry out of all those three the most because I like the characters a lot more and I it it comes off at first on surface level as a cliche uh, magic high school sort of series but the character relationships are actually really well written and I I've actually uh read the first volume with the through fan translations and the action scenes are actually really well written and like yeah there's some really cool sword stuff in it isn't there yeah it's it's kind of like how uh how uh don machi has a lot of good sword like uh battle sequences in the novels it's kind of like that so i really want that one picked up uh the next one is how to raise a boring girlfriend or saikano if anyone's ever watched the any of the two seasons of anime that came out it's kind of yeah, I've seen uh, bits and parts of it. Uh, I picked it pretty much because uh, we need more waifu wars, because and that's a big one. Yes. <laughs> and once again, like I said with Toradora, why I like Toradora so much, I think we need more school, no, more a slice of life series, since we seem to get, especially now with uh, all these new licenses we got, uh, we have way a huge surplus of isekai stories. And we, I think we should probably kind of balance it out a little bit. And I also, I think it's, I think it'll be the first series that's about making games. And like, there's been plenty of anime about high scores joining clubs to like make video games, but I don't think we have any of them licensed in English. And the man, and the manga of the series is already licensed in English too. By yeah, I have it right behind my computer actually. Yeah, what what company, what publisher publishes the uh, the manga version? It's a uh, Yen Press. There you go. Yen on the license of the light novel already. And then the third one is the most unsurprising pick of them all, which I'm sure at least one person also on the podcast is probably going to request it, is uh, Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai. Because once again, it's, it's almost like a, 
it's almost like Monogatari. Like I, I hate how people kept comparing it to Monogatari, even though the only thing similar was like the story structure. But it has probably one of my favorite uh, character dramas, and I think the main, the two main leads with uh, Sakata and Mai are like one of the best anime couples we've seen so far in like anime. And I heard the books are fantastic. And I'm just hoping that they don't turn into uh, the author's previous work. He, it's, if you don't know, it's the same author who wrote um, Sakura So, no Pet Na Kanojo, or the girl, the girl Sakura So, if anyone's watched that anime. But that series was like really good. And then like the later volumes kind of like, fell apart almost if i if i remember correctly it was about the girl who had like autism or something and then the normal boy had to look after her it's about the characters that live in the dorm for weirdos and like the main girl the blonde chick is like semi-autistic to the point where like she can't even get changed by herself but she's like a really good artist the funny thing is i actually went to a boarding school exactly like that except it was all men fun times oh well then like you didn't get to have a harem sorry about that buddy (laughs) <laughs> but like those are my three picks for licenses this year hopefully cool bio what do you want to see get licensed this year um my first one and it's kind of just um an old flame of mine um it's based on a really old light novel that was released in 2004 um i actually watched the anime of it and i was actually kind of hooked and i was hoping to get more content um it's three volumes it's called Denpa Teki Na Kanajo, or um, translate as electromagnetic, um, electromagnetic Girlfriend, if my Japanese was not shitty enough. Uh, but I'm trying. So it's about this delinquent boy who just kind of wants, he's a kind of a loner, he wants to be left alone, but he's like approached by this kind of quiet, introverted girl who um, claims that he was a knight, or claims that he was a king in a previous life, and now she's swearing fealty to him and you know there's some murders going around and they're trying to like investigate what's going on and you know just sort of like hijinks and psychopaths and just investigating fucked up things it's it's a lot of fun it's only three volumes come on come on sam translator already it's only three <laughs> volumes do it i know you're listening <laughs> All right, next one. <laughs> um, next one is another old flame of mine, which is um, I originally watched this anime when I was um, sort of getting into like my first couple of years of getting into anime. It is the Japanese is Seka Kotai no Ichizon. Um, Translated, it means the student council's discretion. Um, it's about a perverted high school student who plays porn games and stuff and he ends up on like the student council because he got top grades and he's trying to build himself his own harem and it's like a parody of like this student council doing bullshit and stuff and it's pretty funny like the anime is great and i want more content because the light novel continues further on than what the anime covered and it's just funny and the funny thing about the series is, is that like you find out that all these girls he's hanging out with actually all like changed and affected his life in some way because um he was a bit of a playboy, let's just say. And, you know, he does <laughs> student council stuff. It's really fun. The anime's lit. And um, the last one on that list is uh, a one that I swear to God why this has not been released in English license. It's unfamorable. Is um, Dead Alive. It's got 19 volumes. It has an anim- It has two anime adaptations in English. <laughs> Third season is airing right Three. now. Three. And it's got anime, and it's got a, the third season airing right now. Why isn't this in English right now? It's got 19 volumes. Come on. Did you mention that it has a movie? It also has a movie. And it's actually rather popular. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a fucking entire Facebook group that's dedicated to translating the side stories and stuff. Clearly, there's a market for it. Come on. I know you people listen to this. Translate Data Live or High School DXD. Just give us a bone for fuck's sakes. Well, and they've even got video games on Data Live too, right? Yeah, and they're yeah. releasing in English. Yeah, and this they're year. getting localized. Yeah. Why can't well, we not get? Why uh, yeah. can't we not get the line novels? What the hell? We got all the games. <laughs> no, isn't. Well, but hold on, isn't Data Live a Fujimi Shobo book? Yes. So I'm kind of wondering, like, the whole Fujimi Shobo 
wall just started to crumble really like yeah. last year. So that's kind of where I'm wondering if maybe we might see some of these titles finally come to light because I mean, I know we've got a couple of Shobo titles, but uh, it only really started, yeah, this past year, I think, that we really yeah. started actually, they started licensing. I mean, there's already a fan translation already out. All you have to do is, like, clean that up, well, and it's, like, done. Well, I mean, you know what? Uh, if it's a good translation and the translator's open to it, uh, I know Sam did that with Roku Joma. Um, he did that with one other title, too, didn't he? Yeah, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure he's done it. Maybe um, Magic yeah. in this other world is too far behind yeah. because that did get released so quickly. Because that's been like a monthly release. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, I think it's that one too. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's not beyond the realm of possibility. Well, I, I just I just feel like it's odd. Like, it's a fairly popular series. It's got it's, it's getting anime. It's got anime. It's got games. I mean, I mean, clearly there's a market for it. I mean, I don't know how popular it is here in the West, but it's popular enough to get English dub. So, yeah, and also the games are getting localized. Essentially, we have everything data live related uh, in English localized, except for the manga, which had extremely bad luck and like never got past the first book in adaptation. And we don't have the light novels. We have everything else. Yeah, so that's uh, my thing for now. So, John Luke, you're up. Okay, so... um. Well, as Bio said, my third one is an old flame of mine. And, <laughs> well, an old flame that I barely just gave up on, but it's still number three because, well, still have a little bit flicker of hope. But uh, it's a gate. Mm. And, like, why I practically gave up? Because the anime is all, uh, already out. Uh, like, there's no word for the manga English translation. Well, I think, like, this um, visual novel translation group, like, they kind of license or th there was a project to bring it over, but uh, never really heard of it since last summer. It kind of went dead. Yeah. Um, and basically, like, really liked that series. Like, uh, I read a couple of volume of a uh, fan, tra fan translation, and like, it's only ten volume long, uh, if you don't count like the the sequels or spinoff. And like, I I really wondered for a long time, like, why isn't this one out? Like, when the anime came out, like. Okay, th this is when we're gonna get an English translation, and nope. <laughs> and yeah, I, I just like, um, like I didn't like at all the anime, but uh, the manga and the light novel I really like. And basically, because you have like this whole exploration uh, aspect of the the book, like. Yes, uh, sometime in Isekai, like you have uh, someone who's new to a world, you have a kind of world building thing. But in there, it's really um, like w when the Japanese army just goes into that other world, like it's like Stargate, like <laughs> their mission is to explore. And that what I kind of liked about it, like there was really something kind of appealing like you had the this kind of hybrid between uh tradition well traditional the isekai you see most often and like something a bit more unusual like the um, for one of the first time the main character was a bit older i know the anime focused a lot on on him and his iron group but the light novel uh like focus on a lot of the other characters, like the a lot of the other side characters, whether they're from Japan or uh, that other world. Like you, there's a lot more depth, and that's what I liked about it. Like the the other, uh, I think he is a, an ex military, so you you have a lot of detail on that part of the story, but you also have a lot of detail and research done on. Uh, the Roman Empire, like, and 
that time because the the empire and the other world is a lot based on Roman um, like history compared to in the anime they just change everything to uh, like basic um, European fantasy yeah and uh, John Luke I don't I don't want mean to burst your bubble but the Japanese self-defense League technically is not an army or a military because um <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know. I just said oh, it out on. of um, <laughs> like to to generalize, but uh, well, it I is know, now an army uh, now because like uh, the uh, Japanese quite, quite have a, now it's now. Uh, I know quite a bit on the, the history it, uh, and everything, it, but uh, I, it has a lolly death god. Come on, what else do you need? <laughs> like seriously, I, I, like that alone. That alone says screams. License me. Come on now. <laughs> well, she is pretty cute. Well, and a dude. Yeah, and she I, I, she's one of the most interesting characters. I wanted a I wanted a uh, figma of her so bad. <laughs> <laughs> because for for one time, like uh, that character, yes, yeah, she's a lolly character. She's over nine hundred years old, but at time she's yeah whimsical like a child. But at other time, you really see her as a doting grandmother. Yeah. And that, that's what really surprised me. Like, you really see, uh, like, the, this uh, kind of uh, diverse um, personality. And I think that that's what's missing in a lot of uh, other series where you have uh, immortal uh, well, beings. Well, even though, like, biologically... She kicks like, so much ass, too. Yeah, like, even though, like, say, biologically, <laughs> she's a little girl. I mean, she's lived over the centuries, and that's going to be do that's going to do something to you. Like, if you live for fucking 900 years, yeah. you're either going to be batshit sane or eccentric as fuck because it's the only thing that keeps you grounded in reality. Yeah, and, well, she's she's the apostle of the dead god, so... <laughs> like, uh, I kill an orgasm! You, you see dead people everywhere! <laughs> well, you know what? Maybe, maybe uh, you know, we've got 86 coming out this year. Maybe it will open the floodgates to more military-themed light novels maybe. and stuff maybe we'll see that so anyway what's so. your what's your number two okay number two it's uh, th this one is a bit odd because it was already licensed but uh, it kind of stopped and it is a uh, scrapped princess hmm. like uh I, I like i recently saw a new books of uh, Tokyo Pop, so I don't know if they revived or something. Yes, they have. Uh, well, I hope they either continue that series, seeing that the light novel train just goes on in popularity, or otherwise someone else just pick it up. Like, it's a really good series. Like, uh, the anime was good, but not as good. Like, uh, the anime was kind of... Um, uh, PG thirteen Deadpool. <laughs> As to this one, it's the the real deal. Like it's really goes in the depth of the dark fantasy. Like it's not as dark as uh, let's say Berserk, but uh, still, it's more. Um, you you re really feel the realism of uh, the story over there, and. Well, basically, it's uh, a prophecy that um, the newborn child of the queen is going to be uh, the destroyer of the world when she turns 16 years old. And uh, so fearing that the world might end just for uh, the life of a child, well, they send her to death sentence. But uh, the knight uh, tasked with uh, killing her, well, he just couldn't do it so he just leave it to fate and leave her in uh, a river but uh, she survives and later on when she's about 15 years old a uh, rumor of her uh, still alive reach the kingdom and they send assassin after her and uh, she kind of flees with uh, her adopted brother and sister and like th that's where you have uh, a lot of interesting stuff going on. Like you have uh, these brother and sister, like they protect her with their life. But at certain point, like a lot of other people uh, just ask them, like, is the life of one person really uh, that important? Like 
how come you wait like the the life of an adopted sister versus the rest of the entire world and like you have a lot of plot twist like to what destruction of the world might mean and don't spoil it so really interesting Sean series Luke, yeah don't spoil but uh, it. <laughs> well yeah but but still still it, it's that kind of dark story that's always in the gray area and hmm. like it's really great read well i know okay so just really briefly because god we could probably do a podcast on tokyo pop but um so as far <laughs> as i understand it basically what happened was tokyo pop pulled up operations shut everything down in north america and apparently limped along over in europe somehow um that's yeah. the story i hear and then i guess they've gotten their collective crap together over the past decade and now they are starting to put out some titles internationally again. As far as I know, though, uh, probably most of the light novel licenses they had will have expired. Because I know Sam was saying to us uh, before that the contracts are usually five, maybe tops, ten years. Uh, with, you know, the chance for renewal. Because if you're putting out the series still, stuff like that. But that... You know, basically, if you flounce out on the, the contract and don't put anything out, it does have a time limit to expire. So I, I know a lot of people have been talking uh, to, well, J Novel Club, Yen Press, all of the current publishers about trying to rescue some of the Tokyo Pop. Because, my God, they had like Kino's Journey, Full Metal Panic. Uh, like they had a ton, a ton of good titles that I know people would love to see. So anyway... That's, yeah, so who knows? Maybe. Maybe it's possible. Uh, and what was your third one, John luc Okay, so, well, third one or my first one, the one I, I really hope gets picked up. And, well, so number one, basically because uh, there's nothing else available or there's no anime, there's uh, nothing else really uh, that I can sink my teeth in. And... Um, I don't know if any one of you have heard about it. It's called uh, Tanaka the Wizard. No, I have not heard of it. Ooh, that's an interesting one. Yeah, say, say okay, what's yeah. it about? Uh, basically, it's about... Uh, it, it's a satirical story. Like, it's about an isekai. Like, it's this 36-years-old man who's killed by accident... Like when he comes in front of God, a little bit like Konosuba, well, God says, well, sorry, but uh, I meant to kill another Tanaka and uh, well, it fell on you. So, um, well, uh, sorry about that. And uh, I need to send you to another world to make it up to you. So um, choose a cheat skill. And he's like, well, like they, they depict him as ugly but uh you kind of uh get that he's kind of a normal japanese man but he's ugly compared to uh like a normal uh, isekai uh, main character and basically he asks god well i want to be beautiful and have an harem of girl like an isekai is supposed to have and god just replied uh well uh, i can't do that uh choose something else <laughs> So basically, he goes to choose to have um, to be able to heal everything, like any disease, any like injury. So basically, he's given uh, skills and trait that uh, makes him OP in term of like he has a ridiculously high uh, MP level. Uh, ridiculously high intelligence level but intelligence in term of uh like rpg yeah. like he's not like a, a genius <laughs> like it just influence is a magical output and um also like he has like uh his healing power up the rooftop and basically it's there's not really as far as, uh, as I've read, there's not really a big overarching story. 
uh, it's more like him trying to uh, survive in that other world and you have a lot of uh, satirical um, stuff that I found really interesting mm -hmm. and well just as a parody when he's transported over there like he start naked <laughs> and because of that he get arrested by uh, like uh, the guards and everything and uh, he's put into jail <laughs> and eventually he has to break out of jail and when he finally uh, start living his life well he start by picking up herbs and uh, funny thing because I, I watch uh, just watched the first episode of uh, Shield Hero and he too starts by picking up herb because uh, like there's nothing else that he can do right away but in Tanaka the Wizard uh, since it's satirical he goes ahead and compares picking up herb in a fantasy world to picking up uh, soft drink cans oh, in uh, like recent uh, modern world and basically it's the job of an homeless so he and it's really interesting because it's kind of true. Like you just pick up stuff that just uh, happens to uh, like uh, grow here and there. And you kind of hope that uh, it's worth something. And eventually get, you get a little bit of money to get by. Not that much. But uh, eventually like he, he goes on to... Um, hire his, himself as an adventurer and he buys a house and like there's a bunch of other stuff going on but so uh, is it more like a is it more like a slice of life it kind of in another world type thing or is there like a bigger story to it well th that's the thing it's a bit of everything mm. like he, he just wants to live his life but then uh, at one point uh he finds out that uh, there was a big debt on the house he just bought uh, because the taxes haven't been paid. So in order to pay those tax, well, he has to go slay a dragon to make a potion to heal the, the, <laughs> the princess or something. So like, the, it, it, it's not something he wants to do, but he'll do it anyway. And because he has that big uh, eye up um, uh, magical output, when he first learned the basic... Uh, fire spell it's like way more powerful than this kick-ass mage that has like these big uh, iron spells and like it's really fun to read especially for the satirical element yeah. and because so far the there's actually something i want to mention as well yeah like he teams up with the like this bunch of like young people and like the young dude like the warrior of the party's like got his own like threesome going on and then the main character like cucks him jeez oh, it's that kind of book okay <laughs> that was the most funny part like he's this ugly middle, middle aged man and then the chick like one of the tricks of that particular like harem you know starts falling in love with him and basically the hero gets cucked <laughs> the, the, the quote unquote you know the young dude just keep, gets cucked <laughs> it's funny jeez oh, and well, the, the most interesting thing is uh, at first, like because he, he's an older guy and never had a girlfriend is in, in, in his life, like he only view uh, a virgin as being his potential uh, girlfriend. And as soon as he learned that uh, like uh, th this group of adventure, they're uh, like having a threesome together, like they're out of the picture like they're not interesting anymore and like huh. afterward like when this girl like falls in love with him for a bunch of uh nonsensical reason like he's just like what are you doing there brat go go, go away. hang out with your chad young dude he he's fine yeah. i'm not gonna have his sloppy seconds oh jeez. yeah well the, the I, I could go on and on like there, yeah. there's a ton of like satirical reference to modern world and how like Japanese society and modern society as a whole function in a way that's like not logical. Like we adopted these way of life 
uh, because of historical event and whatnot. But uh, by being in another world, he kind of find that why are we doing this now? Are they like it, it's not logical? We should like do this, do that, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a lot of good stuff in it, and that's why I want like a well a good translated uh, copy of it. It's not like I mean honestly, it it sounds like right up the alley in terms of what we've been getting licensed. So who knows? Yeah, I actually Maybe like it licensed as well because like I've you know I think it's funny. I, I just like the idea. He's just like, yeah, he's just kind of like this old man, like kind of middle-aged dude, and he's just trying to live his life. He isn't like some young buck in his prime, and he's just kind of like, you know, go away, squirt. You, you've got your boyfriend, you know, leave me out of it. I'm too old for that crap. <laughs> well, it's not It's not that he's too old. It's just that, um, like, he, he's uncomfortable. He wants a, yeah, he's uncomfortable. <laughs> well, yeah, he's uncomfortable because he wants... Like a girl that never had a boyfriend because he doesn't want to feel like he's um, he, he's lacking, like he's behind. He lacks but, uh, the confidence. Th yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yes, all right. All right, Kyle. Anyway, I'm oh, up. John Oak. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kyle, what are, you, what are your picks? Oh, man. It's funny. Uh, I almost had Tanaka the Wizard on my list, too. Uh, cut, it, cut it out at the last moment. So, <laughs> Well, that's good. Yeah. Variety. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. My list, I've uh, campaigned for it before, and I'm going to continue to campaign for it, is um, I was a sword when I was reincarnated. Um, I totally have that on my list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <Go> it's <laughs> just it's a series that i wanted for a long time i i've said it on the podcast i want it yeah and that's not gonna change i'm not gonna shut up until i get it <laughs> well I, yeah i i I'll, yeah i'll say it right now that is one of my three picks too and because when you mentioned it i looked more into it and i was like oh my god like i totally think this would be a cool series like it it sounds like it'll actually be fun and 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 seeing that vending machine didn't turn out to be horrible i'm kind of like mm -hmm. a sword's got to be way cooler than that <laughs> yeah it's uh it's a real fun series uh especially with the true protagonist fran not the actual sword but Ooh. her um adventure uh going through life to try to be the first uh black cat to uh evolve to the next stage whatever that may be but um yeah what i find of it i absolutely love and i i want it <laughs> <laughs> all right and what's your pick number two okay my pick number two is uh one i haven't spoken about yet but um it's uh, Yase no Last Boss Gay Areta, or A Wild Last Boss Appears. Hmm. Now, yeah, this is an interesting one. It's another in the, along the lines of um, he gets sent to a game world. Now, the main character, he, um, it's kind of like Overlord, where he um, had his crew, he um, played the game, he got to just the end point where he was just couldn't be touched by the other players in the game. And so he, you know, decides to call it quits and then finally, you know, leaves the game. Uh, things happen. He ends up dying or, well, I can't remember if he died or if he just found himself in the game, but um, he gets transported into the game world as his uh, player character. And, uh, well, it has a gender swap asset, um, aspect, so he played a girl character, so he turns into a girl, so that's always great. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and, well, when he goes into the game world, it turns out that, you know, everything that he's accomplished in the game is kind of regarded as uh, history and legend. And so hmm. he's, yeah, he comes back into the world as a living legend. And the game is, it's entirely its own world. So um, 
his character is regarded as a legend. All the NPCs that were, you know, just mindless whatevers, uh, they now have, uh, you know, they all have souls. They all have personalities. They regard him as uh, just this terribly powerful creature of legend. Hmm. And, yeah, and it's uh, great because that was, you know, his story. And it's also true of the story of um, all the other characters he played with. So all his old crew were also regarded as legends. Um, Their exploits are, um, you know, things of history. And you see some of the other player characters are actually still alive whenever Hmm. he comes in. And so the first thing he does is try to go out and meet them, but it turns out that they aren't, you know, isekai players. Yeah, they're not the actual uh, players. They're actually the, the characters, characters that they played. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. Well, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Actually, that that reminds me of. Uh, well, I'm going to mention a, th- a third title because now that because you, you mentioned one of mine, uh, yeah. which is actually it's funny because it's similar to that, and I kind of liked it for some of the similar ideas that you're talking about. So, I, I will get to that. All right, cool. So, what's your third one? All right, my third pick. Um... I've probably I've spoken about this one before, um, but it's a uh, heavy object, the um, yes. pure sci-fi novel <laughs> from the author of a certain magical index. Kyle, you're killing me, man! You took two of mine. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Great minds think alike, apparently. <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna lie; I was also going to mention heavy object as an honorable mention. <laughs> See, there we go. All right, go ahead, though. It's cool. Go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, the basic premise, uh, you know, the uh, world power structure is essentially collapsed because of the invention of these, you know, gigantic 30 meter tall, um, essentially tanks. And so it follows uh, a crew of one of these objects and it just goes through their just normal um military life as they go from deployment to deployment. And uh, what really made me want to start pushing for this again was the volume 15 that uh, released this year in Japan. And I won't go into spoilers, but think of the island of Manhattan as a gigantic battleship battling 130 different objects. Oh, yeah, okay. that's that's what takes place in wow, this volume. Wow, I live volume. on Manhattan. Whoa. <laughs> Are you the commander of the SS Lady Liberty? <laughs> Any more missiles at D5. Right. You sunk my destroyer. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Yeah, it was just an absolute crazy action-packed chapter that I do not recall ever reading action as well written as this in just that wow. single volume. So oh. yeah, it. Well, you know what, man? I am I'm there with you. Uh, I this one I was like, I want it. I want it mainly because I want to start getting like some mecha. And I know this isn't exactly Mecca. It's not like it's Gundam, but I mean, but it is that idea of like these technological quote unquote marvels or whatever, these weapons that change everything about warfare. So mm-hmm. it it's starting into that kind of like that idea, right? A bit more sci-fi, a bit of kind of like Mecca technology and everything else. And particularly, I like that whole take initially where it's like, you know, only a, only an object can defeat an object until you have a couple of goons who actually like yeah. stumble MacGyver on a way, way to do it. it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, volume love, one alone, I'm... they'd take down like three. <laughs> like, like I just I, I I love that whole concept. Heavy object, I think, is definitely. I mean, it's a uh, the story sounds cool. The world sounds cool. I mean, it's by the same author as the certain magical index, so you know it's a little bit batshit crazy in a few things. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and you know, has pretty good pedigree in that regard too. And I mean, we've got titles by him licensed in English, so 
yeah i mean i'm 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 down with getting this in english i think it would be a a good first step to getting uh to the world of giant robots because i love me some giant robots all right <laughs> uh tom what were your picks buddy so this first one give it up for five years of asking for data live because yeah i put data live on mine as well <laughs> i have actually been asking for it for five years and i'm not giving up i have a data live mug right next to me i own a lot of the light novels in japanese i own the art book i'm never giving up hope <laughs> you put a way you put way more effort than i did <laughs> <laughs> well i put as much effort as you on the index so uh <laughs> might happen hey it paid off there you go see so yeah. Hey, well, we can all, like I said, the Fujimi Shobu wall has finally started crumbling. So maybe this is the year we start seeing more of their titles. Yeah. And even Fingers though, crossed. even though Data Live uh, just ended with volume 19, which I have, by the way, they seem to be like trying to keep it relevant for the next couple of years by inserting it into like their upcoming, uh, what is it, crossover RPG game or something. And yeah. then they also well, have... I don't think it ended. I think it's going to continue for a few more volumes. Uh, I don't... I think it's over. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I read that 19 was the end. Yeah. Yeah, it literally says... That cliffhanger, the, though. Volume 19's uh, subtitle is True End. No, the translation is Mio's True no, End. No, it's, oh. it's Mio True End, not Possessive. Okay, well... Okay, anyway... Maybe it's the end. <laughs> Nonetheless, maybe this is the year. Maybe. I mean, between the anime being out, the fact that Fujimi Shobo's finally allowing some of their titles out. Who knows? Who knows? What's your second one? Uh, my second one is uh, Kimi Toboku no Saigo no Senjo Arui wa Sekai ga Hajimaru Seisen, also known as The Last Battlefield Between You and I, or perhaps The Beginning of the World's Holy War. Uh, I'm getting a good feeling about this one. Uh, I actually predicted Asterisk getting uh, licensed before the anime even happened just by looking at it and getting this feeling, and I'm getting the same feeling with this one. Uh, it's apparently got that whole uh, these future lovers are on opposite armies fighting each other setup going on, and I'm a fan of that. And it's written by Kei Sazane, who has been a light novelist for quite a while, and uh, he doesn't really have a track record of getting anime series or getting licensed to foreign publishers. But uh, he does have hit works that have been enjoyed in fan translation. And I think that Fujimi Shobo might be interested in trying this, at least at some point. They have been getting progressively more lenient with the titles that they give out. So I think that this one, which is by one of their highest mid-level authors, I'd say, that they've had for a long time... Uh, might you know be one of their next steps yeah i could i could see this one uh as a good shot uh i know that it's it, i mean when the new vol the, like the last couple of volumes have been in the top 10 when it's come out um and actually i've been seeing it mentioned like online a couple times like isn't there they just announced a manga of this isn't it yeah i was actually about okay. to mention that uh Suzanne, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah Suzanne is also known for hyoketsu kyokai no eden uh, Sekai no Owari no Encore, which was pretty popular at the time, as well as Tasogare Uro no Utatsukai, which Eden is a sequel to. And it's worth noting that, like, almost all of these were popular enough to get manga adaptations. And it has five volumes out, according to novel updates so far, last time I checked. So it's yeah, around that point where it could get licensed. Yeah, yeah, it's early enough, and it's it does seem to be selling. And like you said, the, yeah, that was the news article I just saw of it. Uh, not too, not uh, just in the past like couple of weeks, I think that they're doing a manga because I think if I recall, I think Frog was posting a side by side comparison of the cover art of the main heroine about how like the manga seems to have simplified her design a little bit. Yeah, her design is pretty complex for the light novel. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty wild. Um, and if I recall, uh, I mean, just to add a little bit, I know you definitely said it has the whole Romeo and Juliet thing 
kind of vibe going to it but but it was kind of neat to me that it was like one of the kingdoms is like a very technology based and the other apparently is like a real magical based so it's almost like that war between magic and technology as well which i thought was kind of a good a cool angle to take with it as well yeah so yeah no i think that's uh i think that sounds like a solid uh a solid guess a solid uh choice what's your third one uh, my third one is uh, Bokutachi no Remake or Remake Our mm. Life. This one, yeah, <laughs> Remake Our Life. Uh, this one is about a guy who wakes up one day to find that he is back in time 10 years and he uh, has apparently uh, made a different choice than he had in his, uh, you know, his previous chance in life. And this time he's actually, uh, he apparently did follow his dream and went to uh, a good school, his dream school, and is following his dreams. So this is about, like, him remaking his life. Hmm. So it, <laughs> it it's a really cool concept, and I, I just really want to see it. Yeah, again, I think you're, I think that's a good choice. Uh, I can see that definitely having a shot at getting picked up. I, I it. it I I remember like talking about it in the top 10. I was like, man, like how many people like you want to talk about the whole, if I could only go back, like who says that just about damn near everybody. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like, I think it's totally plugging into that wish fulfillment that eh, everybody has, right? Like everybody wants that chance and asks themselves, if only I had made that decision, what would have happened? And yeah, I think that's a solid, I think that's a solid title. I, uh, I could see that getting licensed. Yeah, yeah not absolutely. to mention it was apparently in the 2019 Kono Light novel Gasugoi. So it was indeed. Yeah, it was indeed. Yes, which automatically we know from history, automatically makes it a lot more likely that it'll get licensed. Not a sure yes. thing, but but likely, likely. Yeah. All right, Terrence, what have you got for us? All right, so now that you saw how good I was at guessing when I'm just not even trying on the J Novel forums, you get to see how bad I am at guessing when I try to pick m- the things that I like. But uh, <laughs> so, so the first one that I'll mention um, is a light novel. Actually, I'm not sure if it's light novel, but it's a novel called Light Novel. And uh, this one is by um, the author of Welcome to the NHK. Um, right. yes. Tetsuhiko Takimoto. Mm. Um, I believe the art was also by the Serial Experiment Lane author. Um, it's yeah, just Ab- I be- Abe, I, yeah. Yeah, I believe it's just the cover art. Um, mm. So I don't know a whole lot about this one. Obviously, I know the pedigree. Um, I did. I did purchase the Japanese copy just to own it and support it. But um, but it is. Uh, I think it's a boy meets girl in a fantasy world. Um, it does start out in reality, so it seems like it's going to be an isekai. Um, but I think it's going to be a little more... The, the way he writes is, you know, sort of something you can kind of take with you or relate back to your own life. So I think it'll kind of have that more of that kind of dynamic to it. Because um, hmm. it does kind of start with this kid who seems a little depressed. Um, right. You know, he doesn't really want to go to school. He has a tough time getting up and going there. He'd rather spend time at the beach working on a sandcastle or whatever. So, yeah, I, I'm interested to see where it goes and what it says, you know, whether it's, you know, an analysis of light novels, like like a deconstruction, reconstruction, mm. as Bio Gundam would say. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, well, like yeah. I, I'm interested where it goes with it because it, it does have that cheeky title in it. Um, mm-hmm. So that would be my first one. Um, and then I'm going to cheat a little bit. So, uh, you guys all did your old flame. I'm going to do my old flames. Um, (laughs) so I've already mentioned, uh, uh, beautiful boss a lot. So I'll just mention that again. It's, um, uh, attacking the dungeon with my beautiful boss's overtime work mentioned it during the anime expo podcast, the one before that one. Um, So I'm just bringing it up again, and let me see if I can pull it up. Um, someone actually asked Sam on Curiosity Cat, are, are titles like those of Katakawa labeled Novel Zero, do those interest you? And he said, they do. I kind of like the Does Dungeon Crawling Count as Overtime series. So 
word of God is out there that he's at least interested. So come on, Sam. <laughs> um, and then um, my other old flame um, is uh, Zoa Hunter. I don't know if I've mentioned it on the cast a whole lot, but it's a um, it's a sci-fi series. Um, basically, it's about this guy. He's a motorcycle racer. Um, he races on the, like a one pedal motorcycle. It's in the future monocycle racer. And uh, one, after his race, he you know, wins. He's you know on top of the world. Um, this beautiful woman approaches him, goes to bed with her, and um, all of a sudden he gets attacked by a beast, like out of nowhere. It comes through the window, and he loses all of his limbs and everything. So it kind of reminded me of um, Mardok Scrambles, Scrambles setup. I don't know if anyone's read that um, novel where you kind of have this main character goes through this kind of grotesque, you know, um, situation. Um, and then kind of gets taken in by, you know, scientists slash, you know, government people that kind of uh, put prosthetic limbs on him, um, kind of bring him back. And then they tell him about how basically there was an experiment that went wrong. And that's what those beasts are. And they cool. say, um, if you'll fight for us, you know, um, you know, we'll give you a job in the government. Um, you know, you can't really go back to your normal life, but if you want to fight for us, you know, we'll give you a job so you can take out these beasts. Um, basically uh, there was an experiment to try to make humans into like extremophiles that could live in desert climates and underwater or in weird regions. And so they tried to alter human DNA basically is to solve the overpopulation problem. Um, it, uh, didn't work and the chimpanzees that they experimented on got out of the facility and they became these big amorphous blob things. And so that's what he's taking out basically. So it's sci-fi. It's kind of futuristic, but not too much. It's very urban sci-fi. Um, hmm. so yeah, I like that one. Um, cool. and, uh, my final requests um, there have been a lot of weight loss novels. Uh, I, I kind of want to get one of, at least one of them. Um, so I have two that I was looking at and I'll just mention them really briefly. Um, one of them is called, I was summoned to a different world, but I was forcibly sent back to Japan because of my weight. So I decided to <laughs> lose it. Um, this one does have a manga adaptation. I believe the light novel is up to two volumes. Um, uh, hero goes to another world. Uh, he's supposed to be the hero for the other world, but he's too heavy set, so they send him back. But they actually, <laughs> I, I don't know if they send him back purposely with um, the princess or if she accidentally gets sent back. But anyways, she's going to basically coach him up so he can lose weight so they can go back to yeah but the parents he could just have a gland he could just have a, like a glandular problem and it's not actually his diet he's just <laughs> genetically dispositioned to gain weight i would not be surprised wow. but uh <laughs> but but you know you never know uh, but i would not be surprised if they did like a a story where you know you don't have to lose the weight you can still be a hero even at your you know your size um but swing but swing that sword fat boy swing it yeah, but you know, in Japan they have a they have a sport called sumo, which is a bunch of fat people doing wrestling moves. I mean, that would be cool, isekai, like a sumo wrestler, isekai. But... Can you imagine? A, can you imagine an isekai where like a sumo just like grabs the demon king and slams his ass? That would be a, like, I'm signing up for that, man. That, if that if that does not get an anime, I just I don't want to live in that world anymore. <laughs> Sam, work on that, adapt that, and if it doesn't exist, write it. Get it's to back, get to work. It's gotta there be is, done. There is one with a professional wrestler. Not a sumo, but a professional wrestler. Hey, man, that's Close a step enough. in the right direction. <laughs> nice. Now he's coming in with the chair. Now he's going for the Twizzler. Look at the hang time. Oh, that's going to hurt. <laughs> oh, God. So, so, that would be awesome. So just a little bit of additional info. So this one is reverse isekai, but it looks like um, some enemies will... Um, enter their world. Um, it looked like from one of the inserts, spoilers, 
it looked like there was like this big colossal slime monster that was like invading the entire city. It was like taking up a whole city region. So and dissolving all the girls' clothes in that region. <laughs> so because <laughs> light novels. So light we'll, novels. we'll see how action oriented it gets. But yeah, it could be interesting. And then um, right. just finally, there is one more um, weight loss one. This one is an isekai, traditional isekai. It's called I Reincarnated as a White Pig Noble's Daughter from a shoujo manga. Now, this one actually has two volumes, and it also has a manga, so kind of the same trajectory. Um, the web novel is always getting updated. Um, it is a shoujo, uh, stars a girl that basically gets reincarnated into a novel or, or a manga that's very popular. Um, but she gets reincarnated, again, this is very common, uh, she gets reincarnated as a villainess, um, and she wants to avoid being killed or forgotten by the story. I believe she gets killed for whatever reason because she's on the evil side. So she kind of, I think, wants to marry into maybe the good side. We'll see what happens. But basically, she's going to lose weight, so she attracts someone so she can go to maybe the good side. At least that's kind of what I get. Or it could just be uh, so she doesn't get forgotten by the story, um, dude. Yeah. I hope that doesn't. I hope that doesn't get licensed, man. Yeah. You know the friggin' like hate that book will get. Yeah. People will be like, it's fat shaming. Well, and, it, it, oh, it, you're saying the only way to attract a man is to be thin and beautiful. I, I don't think and... it's. I don't know <laughs> if it's entirely about attracting someone, but she does want to lose the weight at the very least, so she's not forgotten Well, if you think story. about it, being a, actually properly obese causes a lot of health problems. Oh, if she's, and, doing it, um, if she's doing it to be healthy, God bless her. That's yeah. cool. Well, and but, it also in the story, this is where the element of fat shaming could come in. She's harsh on herself to the point where mm. some people that have read the story have said, it, through 10 chapters, basically, um, it, starts to, it starts to calm down after chapter 10. But she's very harsh on herself in terms of her weight, um, you know, problems that come from her weight or per perception of her weight um, hmm. in terms of, you know, she thinks she smells all the time. She thinks, you know, from sweat, she thinks she's, you know, so overweight that, that the horse won't be able to carry her. There's things that, that go on to, I think, later on. There's more stuff where she's just very hard hmm. on herself. So it could be a tough one for, hmm. for people. I, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Again, I don't know if my whole reading of it is correct. You know, um, uh, if it's okay, I'll just read the synopsis really quickly from novel updates. Um, so it says, I recalled my memories of my past life after my grandfather told me my engagement was annulled. At the same time, I realized this, was the, this world was the same world as my favorite shoujo manga. The villainess who exhausted every method possible to bully the heroine, I reincarnated as that villainess's chubby follower. I shook upon remembering the future lined up for her. When the villainess's evil deeds came to light, she pinned all her crimes on Brittany. I was the character that gets executed. To reliably avoid this, I must not become the villainess's follower, as this villainess only keeps those who are exceptionally uglier than her by her side. I may be able to do something if I slim up. For now, let's go on a diet. So it, I guess it's a little more about uh, I want to get away from this it's, villainous character. Uh, so it's not so much I want to attract a man. It's yeah. just the idea that if I'm healthier and I change who I am as a person, then I won't be victimized or picked up by this person. Okay, yeah. well, that's a different... Okay, that's a little different take on it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was like, man, the first when when I was thinking it was like, I want to marry a nice man, so I'm going to lose weight. I was like, oh man, <laughs> we so we already have so many problems they're, with light novels. That's and, just and it's yeah. Well, it's, actually, in the dark ages, if you yeah. were fat, that was actually a sign that you were healthy. It's pretty. So uh, it's pretty clear in the story too that she does. She sees her weight as a problem, but some of the other characters they they really don't. They just see mm -hmm. her as a person. So, right, so right. her own reflection on herself is worse than how other people see her. Other people are uh, attracted um, to her. Almost in a way how ba uh, how Katarina in uh, My Next Life as a Villainess always talks about how she has a villainous look on her face, mm -hmm. whereas everybody else is kind of like, 
yeah, she looks so strong and, you know, and yeah. and she's cute and stuff like that. And she's like, yeah, I just have total villain face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. All righty. Well, uh, um, obviously, Heavy Object has already been mentioned, as well as Tensei Shitara Kendeshita. I was reincarnated as a sword. So I will mention my first one, which was... Around 40, Kenja no Isekai Seikatsu Niki, or it's roughly uh, uh, four, 40, around 40-year-old 40 year old man's travel guide to another world. Oh, and I, I was going to so read So basically yourself at suiting into the series. One. Yes, that's right. Because God damn it, I'm in my 40s <laughs> and I want an Isekai guy who's cool and like rocks an Isekai world and is 40. Yeah, that's right. I need some self-insert. Um, you know, this one caught my eye the first volume be that I talked about in the top 10 because dude was riding a motorcycle and looking slick as F, man. <laughs> and I was like, now here's an isekai pro tag I can get behind. <laughs> yeah, I want that just based on the covers. Like, I really yeah. want that. <laughs> Right? <laughs> I, you know what? I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I think, you know what I think it is, is that we've had a few titles with characters that are older. Um not a lot, though, uh, and not a lot that even if the character was older, that it plays up that aspect of it a lot. But this one sounds like it does, right? So it's like mm -hmm. he's taking a more mature and adult sort of viewpoint of the world and his relationships and stuff. I, I think it, I, I just think it would be just different enough yeah. and to make it have fun. It's got a lot of volumes, I think. I think it's either up to six or seven, so... It's ongoing uh, and eight. it's, yeah. It's oh, up eight. to eight. Yeah, because yeah. actually, well, spoilers, the top 10 that I'll be recording this <laughs> week, it's uh, on the top 10, volume number eight, which is the latest volume of it, which is actually why I, I mean, I knew that this was one that I wanted, but then I was like, oh yeah, that's the title, around 40. But yeah, you can't, it's, yeah. So, uh, that yeah, I, I'd like, and again, I, I want to see some older protagonists. Like, you remember um, that new game plus that, got into all the controversy and got canceled. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. That was one one that I, I kind of wanted to see continue because the character was like, what, 95 or something when he mm -hmm. died? Like, And so his actions were a lot more, they weren't like as knee-jerky or awkward as like the average teenager when they get into an isekai. Like it was, he was a lot more thought out. It was a lot more you know, planning and taking advantage of situations. And I, I just was kind of like, you know, I'd like to see that a little bit more. Like, I think that would be cool. So that's, that's one that I, I would like to see. Um, another title that came up on the top 10 a couple of weeks ago. And I thought, well, you know, it's kind of like sword art meets, uh, well, actually funny enough is similar to what the title that Kyle was talking about. Um, and that's called the new gate. Uh, and this one, basically, it's uh, sort of along the idea of, so they're trapped in a game of death, a la Sword Art Online, and one of the top players who, you know, with the other top players manages to clear the game, and everybody is getting freed, and before this top player actually can escape from the game, there's this bright light, and he kind of passes out, and when he wakes up again, he realizes that he's still in the game world, but it's now like hundreds of years in the future of that game world. And it's that same idea where like his deeds are all seen as the ancient past. And, you know, no one really knows that it's him because of course, you know, how could he still be alive and everything else? And it's just basically then again, him sort of adventuring in this world, trying to figure out how he ended up here, why he's here and can he escape and everything else. So I, I kind of like that idea of, you know, a character, doing good deeds <laughs> and then experiencing sort of the fallout of those deeds many, many years later. You know what I mean? Like that kind of idea of how does history view what you did and, and actually being there to experience how history is viewing what you did. I, I think it's kind of a cool little twist uh, that I would be curious to check out, but uh, a t Kyle's title sounded cool too. So I'd be good with either of those. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so there we go. Uh, I'm not going to bother trying to find a third one right now because, you know, I I'm all good with, like, double voicing heavy object because... More mystery titles, please. Um, <laughs> I, well, you know, we're... Actually, you know, Vertical's doing pretty good with those, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, yes, we well, we already said we want more Sorigoto, so Vertical. 
come on, get on it. Um, and they're actually bringing out that uh, A.G. Mikage one this month yeah. uh, about the serial killer who is a police psychologist or whatever that uh, is brought in on a serial murder case. If you uh, want to so, hide a tree, hide it in the forest. That's well, basically that book. <laughs> <laughs> well, fair enough. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, we are getting some mysteries. And, I mean, they brought mm. out, like, uh, the Dark Maidens this past year, which was really good. And mm-hmm. uh, so, yeah, so we're getting some of that stuff. It would be cool, though, to get a light novel series that was actually, like, a series. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, that that was like an ongoing sort of detective yeah. series. Yeah, That'd like be cool. detective. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, the problem with those detective series is they either become episodic or they build up like this big mystery, which becomes disappointing in the in, in the mm. long run because majority of writers don't know what the hell they're doing in the long game. <laughs> well, you, you I don't know mind what we if it's need. Episodic. We, we need the uh, cl- the uh, literature club series Hyoka. Mm. I'm yeah. I'm hoping Good for thing. Sakurako San, but I. I don't. I, I didn't have enough to make it a request. Yeah, I. Uh, I love mystery or, series. I just want more mysteries. Yeah. yeah what the, What was that one? The the anime came out. Um, the the lovely bones or whatever. Yeah, or, the beautiful uh, bones. Oh yeah, I remember that one. It was about the necrophiliac. That was always fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I liked that anime. I thought the anime was really cool. I was like, I would love to see more. I would read this absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, you know what? I will say one third title that I would love to see uh, getting licenses: Majo no Tabi Tabi. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know the yeah the the adventures of Elena, uh, the Q witch traveling around the world and the peep things that she experiences it's kind of like a more magical kino's journey from what i get Mm. so i wouldn't mind uh i'd like to see that because i mean i'm down with cute witch girls so i think that would be cool (laughs) plus it just strikes me as that it it seems like it would be a little more chill slice of life fun kind of book so yeah uh, which i've actually found i've really enjoyed this year so yeah all right Hello, whoever you are yelling in the background. <laughs> That's just my younger brother squeak. I can't. I try. No do you think we should announce what we're doing next um, next time? Yeah. So and I was I was gonna end this up and wrap this up because uh, yeah, long. Um, <laughs> so for our next podcast, and believe it or not, we've actually planned out a couple of podcasts in advance. We're already way better off in 2019. Um, So our next podcast, we are going to be talking about one of the first titles that Yen on licensed that we all kind of scratched our heads and went, huh? And that is going to be the title Psycho May, Psycho Love Comedy. So that's going to be our next uh, topic on the light novel podcast uh gentlemen thank you very much for joining me tonight and because it's a brand new year happy new year and thank you for all of your work in 2018 and hopefully 2019 brings even uh better things for the light novel podcast as we grow and expand what work <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens uh so again to our listeners thank you very much for joining us until next time Bye-bye for now. For show notes and related links, visit lightnovelpodcast.com.